Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the oil paint Photoshop action. So I'm going to be taking this photo here, running the action and recreating this. Now if you want to follow along uh, in this tutorial, I'll put a link down to this photo uh, below. So download the highest resolution of that and yeah, follow along. So I'll go through some more examples of the effect. So here was uh, my before photo and that is after running the oil paint action. Okay, so I will just open up that photo. Alright, so there's just a few things we need to go through just to make sure that your Photoshop file is set up correctly and you don't run in, into any errors. Firstly, look into your layer panel. Go to this top right hand corner icon here. Click on that. I'm just going to detach my layer panel for a second. So yeah, click on this icon and go down to panel options. Right down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Click OK. Um, just put this back. Alright, um, next go to image mode. Make sure you're in RGB color mode. 8 bits channel is selected. Still in the image menu, go to image size. And if you've downloaded this photo, uh, it should be 3160 by 1846. Uh, I recommend using this action on photos with anywhere between, say, 2000 up to 5000 pixels. Um, if you know if I'm up your photo, it's under 2,000 pixels. Just scale it up a bit high. You'll just get a you'll just get a slightly better result. So I will cancel that. Uh, now what I need to do is load up the brushes that were included in the download. So just hit B anywhere over the canvas, and that will activate the brush tool. Right click anywhere over your photo. That will bring up the brushes panel. Click on this icon here, and go to replace brushes. Click on that and select the oilpaintbrushes.abr uh, file that was included in the download. Click on that. And there's only a couple brushes with this action, but you'll need them for the action to work. Okay. Uh, now when you float up your brushes, just make sure that the opacity is at 100%. That's very important. Okay. Whenever there's brushes included in any of my actions, always make sure that the brush opacity is at 100% before you could play on the action. Uh, next what we need to do is create a new layer. So go to layer, new layer. And this must be called brush, all in lowercase. Whoops. Click OK. So the idea here is that you select the brush layer and wherever you paint on this layer is where the action is going to be applied to. So you can, if I just wanted to use say um, this area here, I could then run the action and it will exclude everything else and it will just apply the oil paint effect in that area there. But I generally like to apply this effect over the entire photo so you can just um, fill this layer with one colour. A uh, quick way to do that is just uh, hold down Alt Backspace or Option Backspace and that will fill uh, that layer with the foreground colour here. So if I just chose red, it doesn't matter what colour you pick, okay, just fill that with a colour. So now you're telling um, Photoshop that you want the oil paint effect to be applied over the entire image. Okay, uh, next just go to select color range. Now you only have to, this step here I've had to just um, include just because it's a bug that I picked up with um, CS6 and above. So if you've opened up color range and you're not seeing sample colors as the default um, option that opens up first, so say you've opened up the color range panel here and you've got highlights selected. What you need to do is just make sure that the sample colors is selected. Okay, it's very important. So if it's not, uh, yeah, just select it and click OK. And then when you go back to color range again, sample colors should be selected as the default one. Even though I record in the action, um, you know, sample colors to be used, for some reason it'll only, it'll revert back to 
uh, the last thing you use, okay, which can which can cause problems. So just make sure that is selected. Click cancel. So now I need to load up the uh, actions panel. So I go to window actions and it'll pop up to the side here. Click on this icon here and go to load actions. Select the oil paint.atn file and it will pop up here, okay, in a folder. So to twirl that open, uh, we've got a bunch of different things here. All of these ones here, you do not need to worry about. I've got in brackets, don't touch, okay? The only one you need to play is this one here called oil paint, all right? So don't rename um, any of these, otherwise you'll break the action. Okay, so all you need to, <coughs> excuse me, all you need to do is select the oil paint action and click play down the bottom here. Now the action uh, will go ahead and play through to the end. The action takes about three or so minutes to play back. Okay, so just click play and then come back to Photoshop in a couple minutes time and it'll be done. So I'm just gonna fast forward this video and get to the result and we'll talk about um, what all the layers do. Okay, the action just finished. You see the result there. So just collapse the actions panel. All right, now looking to the layer panel here. Now the first thing you want to do, and you want to do this with any of my actions, is to collapse all the folders that are left open. It's really annoying to having to go down through these folders and close them one by one. So a, quick, a really quick way to do that is to hold down Control Alt or Command Option. Click on this arrow next to the oil paint folder icon here. Click on that. Then when you reopen the oil paint folder, everything will be collapsed. So it's much neater. So all the effects are inside the oil paint folder here. So if I turn that off, you get a before and after of the result. And I've left the brush layer up the top here. If you want to run the action again for whatever reason, just select the oil paint folder and delete that. And then you can just run the action again. So let's go inside the oil paint folder. And the layer I really like to jump to first every time the action's just finished is this one here. It's called Increase Painting Detail, and I've got in brackets here Opacity. So whenever I've got a layer where I've got in brackets Opacity, I'm basically telling you to play around with this layer through its opacity. So at the moment, it's at 60%. Now if I drag the opacity of this layer to zero, you'll see how it removes a lot of the detail from the photo. And if I drag it to 100, you get a lot of detail back. So by default, it's at 60, <coughs> excuse me. So play around with just lowering a bit and see um, if you prefer that look, okay? Or turn up to 100%, see if you, you, you think your photo looks better with a lot more detail. But something else I like to do is basically brush in the areas that I want to be um, in detail and areas that I don't want to have much detail. So to do that, say, um, say the foreground elements here, this tree hanging in, uh, the road here and this little hill in the tree, I want that to be in detail and everything in the background here, I want to have you know, hardly any detail at all. So what I can do is just lower the opacity of this layer to zero. Okay, so I've lost all the detail. Now what I'm gonna do is just duplicate this layer, Control um, or Command J, duplicate that. Now if I select this mask here, oh, sorry, if I just now increase the uh, opacity of this layer to 100, I've brought back all the detail. But what I want to do, I only want to brush in where I want that detail. So if you select the mask and hit Control or Command I, that will invert that mask and turn it to black. So black will hide um, elements of that layer and white will reveal it. So what I want to do is just hit B, grab my brush out. I'm going to right click and select the soft brush. Okay. Now, uh, make sure white is my active color and have my mask selected. So wherever I brush now, I'm actually going to be painting in that layer. Okay, so you can see all that detail coming in. All right, so if I turn this light on and off now, you can see how we have a lot more detail in the foreground and in the background, um, it's falling down into this layer below, which has no detail. You see passages at zero. So if I start increasing the detail here, you'll see it'll start increasing the detail in the background. So that's a really good way just to control the areas uh, that you want in detail and non-detail. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of detail in the foreground here. Something like that. Okay, so back up to the top here, I've just got this folder called Color Options. Um, very simple, if you twirl open this folder, 
I've set up 30 different color options for you to just flip through. Um, all you need to do is just turn on the visibility for these folders, <coughs> excuse me, um, and play around with its opacity. If the effect is too strong, you know, you can just lower the opacity down and use a little bit. So I can just use 50% of that layout. You can also combine some. So I can turn on color option five, um, use a little bit of that. So just play around there with the different colors. Uh, this layer here, use original photo color. Okay, by default, I've just got that turned off. If you turn it on, it will overlay the true colors of the original photo. So during the action playback, I, I perform a um, auto levels and contrast on your photo. So if your photo was um, underexposed, uh, it'll correct that exposure, but a lot of the time it also makes a color correction. So if you don't, if you've run the action and the colors are um, a lot different to your original photo and you want the original colors back, just turn that one on and it'll just override um, all the other colors. <coughs> so this layer here, overall color saturation, um, that's just a simple human saturation adjustment layer and I've increased um, the overall saturation of your photo just a little bit by default. If you want to turn the colors up even more, just use that saturation slider and that will increase the saturation of the colors. This folder here, bump textures, if you turn that on and off, you'll see, if you look down in this dark area down the bottom here, as I turn this on and off, you can see how um, you get these different sort of canvas textures or, you know, where the paint's been applied and a bit thicker, okay? Now, if I just create a new layer under here, I'll just fill this black so we can see this uh, a bit easier. So you can see, I might just turn off the color options for a second. So you can see all these lines here, and that is coming, they are the bump textures that are overlaid over our design. So if I go inside here, uh, I'll just turn these on one by one, talk about what they do. So this, this layer here, overall sharpening, again I've got in brackets opacity. If I turn that one on, what this layer does, it just uh, looks for the edges in your photo, and just add, applies a little bit of sharpening to it. <coughs> Excuse me. So by default, the opacity of that is that, uh, 50%. So if you want a little bit more sharpening, just turn it up to 100. Now these two here, paint, stroke, bumps 1 and 2, if I turn those on, okay, you can see um, what this is. I actually created um, some, some brush strokes, scan them in, and then turn them into a uh, bump map. So that sits on top of your um, your photo here. Okay, just turn those on and off, you can see that. If I just duplicate these layers, Control or Command J, you'll see uh, the effect much easier. All right, so um, if I just duplicate those layers again, you'll and then just turn it on and off. You can see um, the effect that it's having there. So if you want more of a bump map, just duplicate these layers. Um, I've also got this layer here for the canvas texture. By default, the opacity is very low, 50, 15%. If I zoom right in here, you can see the canvas texture there. So if I just turn the opacity up, you can see there's the canvas texture. And that just mixes in with, you know, um, all these other textures here. But that's obviously a lot, well, way too high. So I just like that. So if you want more of the canvas texture to shine through, um, just remember that it's very low by default. And as I increase the opacity, you can see the canvas texture starts to come through. All right, so that's the bump textures. Uh, this layer here, extra brush strokes, I've got in brackets opacity. Uh, what this is, if I just turn this opacity up to 100, it just adds some heavier uh, brush strokes randomly over your um, photo. And if I hold down Alt to Option and click on the mask, you can go inside and have a look at the mask here. <coughs> so you can see that uh, this area is restricted to only appear where those white brush strokes are. Okay, so you can see as I turn that opacity up and down, you see that there. So by default, I think the opacity was at 30%. You can try turning that up a bit more, okay, see how it looks on your photo. Uh, and yeah, just turn it off if it's too much. So going through these two. Now, this folder here, uh, oil paint layers. Let's go inside, and the way I've set this up, you can see there are sets of three layers, all color coded, and it's the same layer set up all the way down. So what, uh, I'll just go to the top here, and 
This one, this bottom layer here is called layer 1 highlights, and you can see in the same spot as you go down, you've got layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, layer 5. Um, and what you've got above here is a simple color layer. And if you turn that layer on, you will see that it will apply um, that color to a particular color range in your photo. Now the reason why I've called this one layer 1 highlights is just a reminder that this color layer here um, is only going to affect the highlights of your photo. And as you go down and turn these color layers on, it starts to affect um, different color ranges in your photo. It starts to work down, you've got the highlights at the top here and the shadows down the bottom. So as you click down, you'll see that it starts to highlight um, different color ranges in your photo. So the reason why I've done this is that you can essentially just uh, turn on one of these uh, layers here double click on that color box and you can apply a different color to that um, particular color range in your photo. So you can be really creative uh, with experimenting with you know, uh, different colors in your oil painting. And above um, the color layer is a layer called bump map. And in brackets here I've got opacity. Now if I just select that bump map, uh, you'll notice that the opacity that is only at 10%. So if I just uh, drag that opacity to 100%, Okay, and if you look to the left here, as I drag this from zero to 100, you can say you can see that it adds a bump map to that particular area um, of your photo. So if I say turn on this layer here, so I can see where the bump map is going to be affected, I'll select the bump map and I'll drag that to 100. So now you can see that it's starting to affect this area as well because we're moving into a different color range okay so you can just experiment with you know turning on these layers seeing where firstly where the layer is being affected and then you know grab the bump map and experiment with just turn it up a little bit so you can see in the background here as I drag from 0 to 100 so it makes it look like this paint's been um, you know brushed on a bit heavier and set a bit higher uh, than everything around it so, um, yeah, just play around with those and experiment with, you know, applying different colors to your design. Okay, so that's the oil paint layers. And the bottom one here, background color, if I turn it on and off, you see it does nothing. <coughs> Excuse me. So you only want to, you only need to play around with this layer is if, um, say, at the beginning of the action, before I play the action, if I brushed, say, only a bit, this amount of my photo, then that's when the background color is going to come through because everything around this area is just going to have a solid color and it will be that layer there. Alright guys, that is it. Um, very simple to use and it's a lot of fun to use. Uh, just don't forget to firstly jump to this layer here, increase painting detail, lower the opacity up and down, get a feel for um, areas of your photo that you want to be um, you, you want to have a lot of focus, sorry, a lot of detail in areas without a lot of detail. And yeah, control control that through the masks and the opacity. And yeah, don't forget the color options to play on those as well. Alright, so I'll just flip this between the before and after. Alright, and I also put down some links to some, some cool um, stock photo sites with a ton of free photos. We can just play around with this action um, and see what results you come up with. So uh, that's it. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. But if not, have a good time using the action. Thanks.